Hey everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my craft room. In this video, we are going to start November crafts and crafting for Thanksgiving. I am really looking forward to the lineup of crafts that I have written on my to-do list today, and I can't wait to show you my inspiration for this year. In this video, we are going to be doing some Thanksgiving inspired crafts. I know you're going to love this. You really loved last year's videos that were inspired by Thanksgiving. So let's go ahead and get started. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you are ready to start crafting, and I really hope you are inspired in some way. As a reminder, everything that you see me use on my craft table will be linked down in the description box below this video in case you wanna add any of these items to your Thanksgiving craft list or to your craft room. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the first craft. I actually found this really neat candle holder at Hobby Lobby, and it was sometime this year, but I'm not quite sure when it was. It was on clearance, and I purchased it for $7.49. Now, it did have some writing on it, but I went ahead and applied a couple layers of chalk paint, and I'll link the chalk paint I like down below. And I actually applied probably about four layers because sometimes it's really hard to cover previous designs. So it makes it even more important to use chalk paint because chalk paint is a lot thicker than regular paint. So, or than most craft paints, right? So I also chose a new font and I think I have the font information. I'll link it down below because I have been falling in love with a lot of new fonts lately. And I think this is one of the new fonts that I recently added to my collection. Now, I only had just this tiny piece of scrap adhesive vinyl and I knew I wanted to do gray. So what I did was I ended up cutting my design or my phrase here into pieces so that I could just get it all cut out on a smaller piece of adhesive vinyl, but then I will reassemble it on my project. So of course, usually it's so easy when you have your whole design just as you want to apply it, right? And you have it all perfectly aligned, but sometimes we don't have the materials for that. And in this case, I did not. I was running pretty low on gray vinyl. So I just this apart in pieces that way I could use what I have and I will just puzzle piece it back together so it's actually going to say come as you are it just cut out kind of backwards there so what I'll do is actually you know I will apply my transfer tape and then I'll cut it after that so I'm going to just expose about an inch here lay it down and because it's nice and long, what I'll do is just apply my transfer tape just like that. That way it just goes on a lot easier. Okay, let me go ahead and scrape this down and then I'll just trim it apart. So grabbing my scissors, just very carefully trim the two pieces apart. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is kind of get an idea of where everything needs to go. So I'm thinking that's that's about right. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball and it looks to be about three quarters of an inch from each side, maybe a little less. So I'm going to Let's burnish the back real quick. That helps me pull my vinyl up. So I just turn it over, scrape down that back, and then I can peel away my little backer. And there's my beautiful vinyl right on my transfer tape. Okay, so I'm thinking right about there is gonna be good. Come as, and I think that looks good. So I'm just going to lay that down, press it down with my scraper, and then sometimes I need a little help with the weeding tool just to get a little lip up. Okay, peel that up. Okay, our first half is down. And you could do decorate this in any way. In fact, what it came, I can't remember 
I think it said gather together or something, but I just really love the beautiful nature of come as you are. I just love that. I think that's just, I don't know. It's just so beautiful to have when welcoming, welcoming anyone into your home or to your table. Okay. Come as you are. And then I'm going to give it some space and then I think, I think that looks good. So, okay. Press that down. Looks nice. Oh, I have had this. Well, okay. I'm trying to decide when I purchased this. I know I actually did it. I did it in a haul, I think a haul video. So maybe in the spring is when I found this. I want to even say it maybe even, maybe even very late winter of last year or early this year. But if you find this, here's some inspiration for what you could do with it. Now I also did buy some really pretty candles that I'm going to place up here. Now I was surprised at how many candles this took. It was two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 candles, which made me laugh because it made me think of the movie 16 candles. <laughs> okay. So this is the final look. I love how that turned out. I think the font is beautiful. Again, everything that I'm using as in materials and font information will be linked down in that description box below, but let's go ahead and move on to our next craft for Thanksgiving slash November. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead turn on my Cricut Easy Press and I am going to set this. Let's see. I'm going to set it to, I'm trying some new glitter iron on and it says in between 300 degrees Fahrenheit and 320. So I am going to do, let's do 315. And then it says, I'm also going to heat it for about 15 to 20 seconds and I will do 20 and we'll see how that works out. Always just, you know, do what you think is you're always going to be monitoring your project. Okay. But I think let's start there. Okay. Let me grab my pillow. I found this beautiful, beautiful pillow at Target. And it was early, early fall when I found it. And I thought that is going to be beautiful for Thanksgiving time. I just love the Navy and the pinks. I thought it was just gorgeous. So I am going to set this to the side, but I grabbed a new roll new to me of glitter iron on because I tend to use a lot of white glitter iron on during Christmas, during the whole winter season. I just love it. So I grabbed a big roll so far. We'll see. We'll see if I like it, but I love the color of the glitter. It's, it's not just white. It has so many different colors in it, which I think is just beautiful. I also found this really pretty design that I thought would be very fun to use. Wow. That, that reads really nicely. Okay. Um, so I'll link the font information down below as well as this glitter vinyl so far it was really easy to weed okay so i'm going to go through get all of my little middle pieces out and what i like to do is grab some of these little magnets just to help keep it down okay so i think this says grateful thankful blessed if i am reading it mirrored <laughs> and backwards or and upside down but I thought it was really neat and I loved the style of it so this would also be a very fun design to put on a cozy sweater or sweatshirt so that's the best thing about designs that you see so if you see a design that you love always you know, remember that you can do just about anything you want with it. You can make a mug, you can make a sweatshirt, you can put it on, you know, a pillow like I'm doing on this one. So many fun things. That's what I love about crafting is you can really have fun being unique with things. Okay. So I'm going to grab all these little pieces because I don't want them to come near my project. We don't need to iron on any little extra pieces. Okay, so let's move this to the side and I'm going to bring in my pillow 
lint roll it. Make sure it's all good to go. Okay. Isn't that pretty? I think it's so pretty. And the back is just a nice blush, which is just so nice. Okay, so now I'm going to just pre-press the pillow. And get any moisture out. Okay. And then I can place... Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, and then I'm going to double check that I don't have any pieces on there that I didn't weed out. Okay, so now I just need to visually kind of center that. And it, it kind of slants up, so that's why I'm just taking my time there because there's really no right way to do it. Well, I mean, there is, but it kind of is angled, which I really like. Okay, I think that looks nice. Maybe over just a hair. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I think that visually looks good to me. Okay, so I'm just gonna press that down just because this is sticky. So that carrier liner is sticky, allowing you to place it and replace it where you'd like it. Now, I don't know if I love that. Well, that's the way it's gonna be. Unless I turn it over, I guess I could turn it over. It can go any which way I want. And well, it's kind of gonna fall any which way. I kind of thought you kind of lose a little bit of the word when it falls on that white flower, but it is what it is. And I still think you can tell what it says. So there's no changing the pattern placement. So we just roll with it. Let's do, I think that looks good. Okay, so pressing that down and then I'm going to bring my press in and let's try 20 seconds. Okay. So I am going to let this cool. And in fact, what I'll do is I'm going to turn this over and just press it onto my cold mat because then that will draw the heat out quicker. And I can feel it cooling already. So I just like to do that. It just helps me keep crafting going. And so I'm not waiting too long for things to cool. Okay, that is pretty good. So now I'm just going to monitor all my little pieces. But everything looks like it laid down really nice. Now, if you found any pieces were coming up, you could just replace your liner down, put some additional heat on, and then get all of the pieces laying down on your project. But I think that's really, really nice. It ended up looking so pretty. I love doing a glitter iron-on on bulky projects like this because it's really forgiving because it's already a little bit thicker and has a little texture to it. So you don't tend to see, you know, any imperfections come through it, which is nice for stuff like this where it's not a completely flat surface, right? We already have a full pillow. So it's not like we are clamping down our material in a heat press or anything like that. So I like to do the glitter when I can on projects like this. Plus it's so pretty. How pretty is that? It's subtle, but they're in person. It's really, really very glittery, which I love. Okay, that is the second project. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I found these really neat coasters and I purchased a set of four and I will try and link them down below if I can still find them, but they're so pretty. They come with the cork lined already. And so I bought a little design and decided it'd be fun to just decorate them. I am going to just line that up. You can put some rubbing alcohol down if you'd like, but I just put the, or brought these right out of the box. So I think it's going to be just fine. But that little design I think looks so nice because it has a little glitter in there, which is super fun. And then I will go ahead and decorate the remaining four. Okay, so here's how they turned out. Aren't they neat? I think it's really, really fun. So I believe the design that I purchased was like a keychain design, right? But Luckily, it worked perfectly for this project, but I love the look of them. I think they're just so pretty, and these are gonna make for a really fun gift. Or if you're hosting Thanksgiving or you want to dress up your table, this would be really fun as well. Plus, if you're attending Thanksgiving as a guest, this would be a very nice hostess gift. So I really love how these turned out. 
Okay, the next thing I want to show you is this really neat frame that I purchased from, I think Michael's, yes, Michael's, and I need to get it all down in there, but it came in this wood and I ordered it online and it's, it's a really nice piece. I just didn't like the color of the wood on the inside. So I decided to go ahead and paint it and do a white base with a white frame. I thought that was really, really pretty. It already came with a white frame, but I really wanted a nice clean backdrop after I saw the color of the wood that it came in. I just wasn't really digging it. And I also found these really neat little wood cutouts that are gold and they're actually meant to actually, I've definitely kept because I wanted to show you. I found these at Target or I'm sorry, Michael's as well. And I, We'll try to link them down below, but they are also used to just kind of lay over a place setting, if you will. I don't know if you can really see that very well there. That's a lot better, but that is a really great idea as well. But I decided that what I wanted to do was, I knew I had this really pretty white, clean looking frame at home. And so I grabbed them hoping that this would fit and I think I like grateful, thankful, blessed. I think I like that the most. Actually, do I, how did I just have it? Because it was kind of working the other way. Blessed, I was supposed to say grateful, thankful, blessed, but it's kind of hard to tuck them that way. In fact, I'm gonna do that with blessed in the middle. Okay, so the reason I was doing that is because the F, when putting those together, it made it, those two too far apart they were gonna you know clash into each other and then that just doesn't look very great so or I could still bring that down to make even spacing but I, I still think that that looks uh, very uh, disjointed if you will so which way did I have it now Ooh, this should have been alive grateful blessed and thankful was that the way I did it let's see rewind the footage or was it this way Last, great. I think it was the other. Well, it doesn't look too bad either. The indecisiveness that comes with crafting. Oh, I like this better. I like how this kind of tucks that little. Oh, it just looks. That looks so intentional. Okay, so I'm gonna do that way. You can do whichever way you want. But I thought I would just simply grab these and glue these on. I thought this would be so pretty. It's a pretty easy project. You just grab a couple pieces from Michael's. Again, additional chalk paint because I just wanted it to have a different look. But I think that's gonna look really pretty. So I'm going to go from the middle out. That's just how I think um, is best for me lining it up. Okay, so I'm thinking blessed will go right there. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna take hot glue, right? I have my little glue llama here. You can use adhesive of your choice. I love hot glue. I've been so successful with it. So I'm sticking to it. I'm gonna go fast, of course, because hot glue, whoop, hot glue dries so fast. Okay, we can do this, we can do this. And Okay, turning quickly, and I can already feel that that is tacky on that side, so I'm gonna have to go and redo, but easy peasy. And you don't have to color, cover the entire word. Just get enough, and you can use wood glue, whatever you would like, but I'm just, I'm gonna add a little bit more over here because it took me a little bit to get glued down. So that left side went ahead and dried really quickly. Okay, there we go. That looks nice. And that precision chip is so helpful when you want to just sneak under little pieces and apply some more glue. Oh, I really like that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the grateful and I think I'll just do the first half and then go through manually and just add more glue to the second half. I think that is what's gonna work best. Okay, so I'll do that, place, and then I'll add more manually to the second half. 
Okay, and my last one. I really like the placement of all of those. I think that's so nice. I'm just going to tuck in again some more glue on the end and we'll be good to go. Okay, I really think that that turned out really pretty and I also think it just looks so intentional. So what a fun way to really look at little items differently, right? These were intended to be something completely different, but just because something is marketed one way doesn't mean you have to use it that way. And I love that this can be enjoyed year after year. I think this is super, super fun. And I also really loved just the richness of that gold. I really think that this turned out looking really high end. And if you are hosting Thanksgiving or even if you're not hosting Thanksgiving, how beautiful would this look in your dining room? I think that's just so pretty. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this one. Let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. Okay, maybe a little less Thanksgiving themed and a little bit more fall themed. I bought this really cute and this was a while ago, so I'm not going to be able to link it, but this came from Target. It was more of a short sleeve sweatshirt. I thought this was so, so cute. So I have been just playing around with what I want to do with design on here and I have, and I did it on my channel too, I created a mama cubed shirt. I created it in navy and it's it's so cute and I still wear it to this day. I made it when I was pregnant with my third baby. So a while ago, well not a while ago, at least um, 18 months ago I made that. I still wear it all the time but it's one of my most it's one of my most complimented shirts when I wear it. Everybody just loves it. So I thought I would make myself just another fun variation of it. And I, I wanted to this time, I think last time I kind of did a little bit more of a like varsity font, which is so fun. But this time I thought it would be really neat to take some patterned iron on and then do a little bit more of a scripty font. Oh, how cute is that? So how cute would this be? Again, a little less Thanksgiving craft related, but a little bit more fall and November ish. I just really loved the look of this. I thought this would be really fun for November with some boots and some skinny jeans. I thought this would be super fun. So I also like that, you know, the cut here or the little seam here just is really pretty with this nice subtle curve of this little text. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pressed on and I, okay, so I cannot remember the font that I used for the three. It is different than here, but I'll try to remember and link the font I used here. Now, when you type out your font, you want to make sure you curve it before you attach it or, or before you weld it together. So especially when you are doing a um, script font like this, because some of these pieces won't align. So you may have to kind of undo them and reposition them. So just make sure you curve before you do any final welding or attaching. In this case, I welded and that will really help you when designing. Okay, I'm going to go pre-press, make sure it will press this on and then we can see how this turns out. It's going to be so cute though. I love, love this patterned iron on. Oh my goodness, this turned out so cute. I love it. It's just so soft and I love the colors for fall. I really like a navy and a blue type of print in the fall. I think it's just really, really fun. So I hope you loved this one. Again, sorry I can't link this shirt, but you could probably find something very similar, but I really did purchase this probably man, maybe two years ago, but I, it's been sitting patiently waiting for just the perfect design. I went back and forth for quite a long time and I'm so glad I waited. Patience comes, to, or let's see, good things come to the person who waits, right? So I'm glad I waited because this turned out exactly what I hoped and I think it's going to be super, super cute. 
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is work on a really fun sign and I'll explain it in a minute. But first and foremost, I am going to take my mini easy press and I'm going to preheat it to medium. And what I'm going to do is I am going to do a little bit of iron on. I'm also going to do a little bit of adhesive vinyl. And the reason and only reason I am mixing the two is because the colors I wanted were in one or the other. So you could do any of this all in iron on, or you could do any of this all in adhesive vinyl, but you know I am shopping my craft space more and more this year. So instead of going to the craft store to get more of a color, I am double checking to see if either the material I am working with will take iron on or if I have that in iron on. So yes and yes for this project. So I needed to get some more white iron on, or adhesive vinyl, but I had a long strip perfect for this little project in white iron on, so I'm gonna use that. Okay, so I have, now I need to make sure this is going the correct way. I have this really neat frame purchased from Hobby Lobby. It's called White Frame Sign with Stain. That's what they call it. And I'm going to turn this over this way because I double checked that my little hanging pieces and hardware is going to be the right side up. And what I thought would be fun is I grabbed these really nice little pieces from Dollar Tree. It came in a big pack. I cannot remember how many, but next week's video, you will see me use one more of these. So if you find these at Dollar Tree, I'm going to give you a variety of things that you can do with them. Of course, you could always make a really fun garland with them as well, but I'm going to do something a little different. So I thought it'd be fun to spell out fall on the little acorns. Really cute, right? And I'm going to use that white adhesive vinyl for that. But then I also thought that it would be fun to add a little, oh, hello, I think is what I did. And I'll link the font information that I used for both of these down below in the description box as always. But again, I just needed to buy more adhesive vinyl. Oh goodness, I have to fix that. Um, which in the meantime I did, oh, why is that? Why is that doing that? Oh goodness, am I gonna have to re, I might have to recut that. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fix that. Hmm, I'm going to see if I can do a little bit of surgery because I really, would prefer not to recut this piece so it's like it's it's almost as if it just didn't cut out perfectly in that spot and then that's why it ripped when it came up and then I'll see if I can just kind of surgically put this back here Okay, so I think I'm actually going to go with it. It's a, a tad imperfect there, but I don't think it's worth wasting the iron on for. So, and it's it's for me. I, I'll forgive myself. So I'm going to do this oh hello here. I'm going to, let's see, I'm just going to place this. I'm thinking I'm kind of bring it down just a little bit so it's almost hugging that little line there. Yeah, and I'm going to left justify that. I think that looks good just like that. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then I am going to, I think I'm just gonna heat right on there. I think that'll be fine. I am just going to place that right down. You could put some butcher paper over this if you, if you find that you need to or you wanna give some additional layer of protection. And you know what I'm going to, just because, why not? Okay, so it says to do it for 40 seconds, iron on on wood. I never think it takes that long, but always monitor the project in front of you, right? Because all projects could be created, created e or differently, and they're not created equally is what I'm trying to say. But um, you'll want to make sure that you're just kind of mon monitoring your personal project. It may take you longer may take you a little shorter in time, but I'm gonna let that just sit for a second. Oh, I think that's fine. Okay, I'm glad that I forgave myself. That would have been silly to recut that. So now I'm going to take some transfer tape and cut these little pieces apart so I can use one piece of transfer tape for each one. And I thought I would just spell out fall on these really, really cute acorns, which are so fun. Okay, so this is a pretty large piece. I'm gonna trim that down. 
There we go. Reuse where I can. Okay. And let's see. Scraper. Craft room is getting a little disheveled because the holidays are coming up and ideas are just... I get very inspired in um, the holiday season. So ideas and things are getting just... or organized as it's getting disorganized, right? <laughs> that makes sense. I know that makes sense to crafters, right? You're organizing all of your crafts, but in the meantime, it's kind of getting disorganized because it's organized chaos. It's a happy place to be though. When, when inspiration is just flowing so beautifully well that it's creating a little bit of chaotic mess. It's a happy place to be. Okay, burnishing the front and back. And then what I thought I would do is, if you notice, there are some little, let me center that, wonderful. Okay, there are some little holes in the top of these acorns so that you could, you know, string them up and make some fun garland or whatever you would like. But I thought what I would do is I pulled some like cream burlap ribbon, ribbon and I'm going to, I think do a fun little wrap with that just to bring a little bit of softness and texture to this piece. I think that will be really fun. Okay, fall and that looks good. And again, font information will be available for you down below. Okay, so there we go. Let's get a little bit organized so that we can finish this up successfully. Okay, I think that is nice and cool. So I'm gonna monitor and pull. I think that looks so nice. And nothing pulled up, so we are good to go. And let's start playing around with the ribbon. So what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking I will, I'm gonna get a clean end here. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut Let's see, half an inch. And I thought what I could do is just wrap. And I thought that that would be super pretty and super soft. And if it starts fraying, even better because then it'll look all fun and rustic. So I'm going to turn this around, place some hot glue on the back. Okay, and I think my ribbon is probably even too long. So I'm probably going to trim. Because I don't want that to overhang. So trim it down. And then I'll wrap, I'll play a little glue, and then I'll wrap. And I think this will be just cute. Oh, actually, you know, I don't know that I need to cut that down. Um, because by the time I pulled that up and over, it was almost a little short. So, oh, I think that's really cute. Now, if you don't like the little pieces that fray off, you can just kind of pull them. In fact, I don't know that I really love that, but I think that's just nice and soft and pretty and it adds a little bit to the piece. So I'm going to go ahead. Let me do one more and then I'll do the rest on my own. So turning over, let's see if I don't trim down how we like that in terms of wrapping. Okay, and more hot glue. Oh yeah, you don't need to. Nope, not at all. That looks so cute. Okay, so I'll finish the remaining two. Again, just half inch. And you could do anything. If you, if you found a really fun plaid or, or color, that you want to use then you can really dress this up that way i just wanted to keep it pretty simple oh also i should mention i apologize i forgot it's kind of implied at this point in every video i i uh, always use chalk paint <laughs> just about always but i did apply and i think it was just a single coat of chalk paint to these really nice little acorns just to give them a nice white look to them. 
and I think that made them look just so fresh and especially going on to this nice wood backdrop. I really love this color. This is just a nice soft color of wood. I thought it's really pretty. Okay. Well, I guess you saw me do all of them. So now what we'll do, it's just too easy to chit chat with you as I craft. Okay. Loving that. Okay. There we go. So now we are going to remove real quick. I'm going to wipe this off because I have a little bit of the burlap dust, if you will, from cutting that ribbon. F-A-L-L. -L. And let's decide on placement. I think that right there looks so pretty. So let's decide on we decided up and down, but let's decide side to side, equal distance in between each one. Does that look good? I think it does. I think we're just gonna go for it. So I'm gonna go from the middle out and let's just do this A. I'm gonna use hot glue again. You do you, do whatever you like. Me and hot glue are in a committed, very happy relationship. Okay, and let's see. Pretty. Okay, press that down. I love this. And I love that it does not have to be Thanksgiving. So I, and I put this in a poll recently because I don't really decorate for Thanksgiving. I decorate for fall. And of course I bring in a couple pieces, right, that are a little bit more unique to Thanksgiving. Um, naturally, but my fall decor is essentially my Thanksgiving decor. So once Halloween is over, so I decorate for fall in like September, right? And then once Halloween is over, most of my fall decor comes back out with an addition of a couple Thanksgiving pieces, if that makes sense. And I think I did a recent poll. Well, I know I did a recent poll, but I think the results were pretty much the same um, as I do it. So that was kind of fun to see that most people kind of decorate for fall and then their fall decor kind of ends up being Thanksgiving decor. So I'm sure most of you will appreciate a piece like this that can be used for a little bit longer in the year. Oh my gosh, I love that. And this piece I've had in my craft space for a very, very long time. I'm gonna trim off this little piece here. Um, probably over a year, just waiting for the perfect thing. Again, I struggle with pieces like this that have the indentation in it. They're so pretty and I buy them time and time again because I never learned my lesson. And I think they're so beautiful because they're, they're very much my style, right? But I find them really hard to get inspired with sometimes, but then in the end, I always really love them. So I always end up putting dimensional pieces on top of them because I think it looks really nice, but I also really like that piece on the back um, that's just directly ironed on. So I love how that turned out. That is so darn cute. Okay, we have a couple more to go. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, well, I'll just surprise you. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is this fun little kit that I found at Target this fall. And it is intended to create this really neat tassel decor, as you can see in this little picture over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. It comes with its own stencils. And so if you wanted to, you could just place the little stencils right over each little piece. So if you wanted to, you could just place the little stencils right over each little wood round and paint on. I have a Cricut, so I like to just cut out little pieces of vinyl because I think that is much easier and much quicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So let me open this up and get all the little pieces out and we will start decorating and assembling. Okay, so again, here are the beautiful stencils and the font is really fun. I think on the example, they spell out home. I am going to do the exact same thing. I thought that was really fun. And I just think it also makes for some intentional all year round decor as well. So fun for, of course, um, you know, autumn and Thanksgiving time, but you don't have to immediately take it down if you don't want to. Okay, so I'm going to quickly, but also mindfully <laughs> weed this out. It's a little bit thin of a text, but I thought it was just so dainty and nice. And again, information about materials and font will be down below. Okay, I think what I'll do 
is I think it would be wise for me to assemble this first. And I'll tell you why. I don't want to monitor where the little hole is and you know, on top and bottom. I mean, it's very easy to do, but I think it'd be easier because that way I could just, you know, align these perfectly up and down. I think it'd be easier just to have it assembled and ready to go. Now they give you this little plastic needle, which thank goodness I didn't notice this, but when I was looking at the kit, I thought, how am I going to get those little pieces through? <laughs> because that, you know, it frays and all that. So let's see. Okay, so if I'm reading the directions right, of course we start with our needle, then we take our little jute tassel here and we thread it through through the loop, is that correct? Okay, so I think it's this right here. So I'm gonna thread it through here, okay? And then I'm going to simply tie a knot to tie it off. Okay, so let's do that. Let's tie it off and let's double it up. And I think that's I think that's what they're asking me to do. Okay, then I'm going to trim this off. I'm not going to use my nice fine detail scissors for that. I'm going to use just my all purpose. Okay, so that looks so far so good. Then I'm going to take the first, is this right? Yes. Okay, the first bead, bring it down, okay, and a couple little pieces here. Sorry, that's bothering me. I have to just, okay, take care of it real quick. Okay, and then we're going to do just our little pattern, right? We're going to do a bead, a little block, or a wood round, a bead, wood round. Oh, I should have let my kids do this for me. They would have loved this. But it's good to show you. <laughs> Not that you probably needed the help at all, right? And then here we go. And either or. Okay. One and two and one. Okay, now how do we finish this? cutie pie off. Okay, and I think it just says bring this down and tie a knot at the base of the bead. Simple enough. And of course, I mean, these are just the directions. You can obviously do anything that you wish. Okay, and then, well, that looks nice. And then just trim your extra piece off. Okay, so there's our little piece. That looks really cute. Okay, so now you could, of course, take your stencil. I would recommend assembling it first, whether you do the included stencil or you do um, the vinyl. Now, if you like the idea of stenciling, but you maybe aren't fond of this look or font or anything like that, you can make stencils with your Cricut machine. And I have a video on that that I'll link up here for you in the top right corner. Okay, I'm going to grab that transfer tape once more. And let's trim that down. We'll just go one by one. But I do like the idea of it being assembled because then you can really apply your letters really straight when, oh, there we go, um, when you're already given a nice direction, right? So I'm going to go H. Oh, I love that. That's pretty. Okay, H. Oh. And of course, my little E is being a stinker right at the end, which is fine. Just have to wing it a little bit. There we go. Okay, there we go. I think that's so pretty. I love how that looks. H-O-M-E, again, really fun for fall or November, but also very easily translates all year round. Okay, the final thing I want to do this evening in our final craft is to make some napkin rings. I thought this would be really fun. And I'm trying to decide how long I want them to be. So I'm thinking they need to be, if I roll this up, Okay, and I'm going to put a little pen mark. 
I'm kind of just rolling up to to see you know what a napkin ring would look like and I think that's about good so and giving myself some room also to you know overlap to put a little clip I'm just going to mark roughly where that is that way I can measure so that's about five about five and a half a little well, it's about five and three eighths I think okay so five and three eighths round round down to five and a quarter or up to five and a half whichever you'd like but I'm going to and I'm just gonna draw a nice a nice line giving me some room to I think that looks good five and three eighths five and three eighths yeah okay so I'm just going to draw a line. This is the back side, so it really doesn't matter at all. Okay, perfect. Just enough for my eye to see. So let me just cut those out. Now, did I mention I found this at Hobby Lobby? This is some faux leather. In fact, I should make my girls some hair clippies with it. If you want to learn how to do that, I have a tutorial on how to make little hair snaps with the faux leather. It's so fun, but I thought this would be pretty for napkin holders for Thanksgiving. So now that I know my width, if you will, I need to determine my height and I'm thinking I will do an inch and a half. I think that will be nice. So if I do an inch and a half, I'm just gonna put it on my mat here and I probably could cut this out with a rotary cutter, but I just, I just don't wanna bring more material out tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these pieces out. Again, we're at five and three eighths by one and a half. And it's so easy to trim. You could also send it through your Cricut if you would like to. And I think that is going to be the perfect size napkin holder. That's very nice. Okay, cutting out my final piece. And again, you can use your Cricut to do this if you'd like. Honestly, it's so easy to do by hand. And I think sometimes it's easier just to cut with scissors and it saves time, right? Sometimes I just don't want to go into design space and do all the designing and send it to my mat and all of the stuff and find all the cut settings. So scissors can be a lot quicker sometimes. Now I'm going to get my little um, snap press tool because I want to add a fun snap to the back and I'm going to keep these really simple. I just want a nice simple little snap on the back because I want them to just be really really plain. Well beautifully plain right? I really just love the gold. I love the herringbone style and I think that this just doesn't need any more. I think it's so so pretty. Now next week in my tutorial and my next Thanksgiving video, I will be doing the place card holders that I'm going to do with these. And I am really excited to show you my idea for those. So go ahead and subscribe if you're brand new and joining for the first time tonight. But next week, we'll work on the little, uh, little name cards that will accompany these. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in my snap press. I'm actually going to set to the side for just a moment because it likes to steal focus. And we'll just decide on the snaps. Now, it, it doesn't need to be anything special because this, it will be displayed snap side down. So I think I might even, um, you know, well, I don't know that gray it actually kind of looks nice just because it really blends in well with it. In fact, I'm going to do that. So I will get these nice little gray pieces and I'm going to get all four pieces that I need. So two of the pokey sides, just like that, and then a male and a female end. So... There we go, that's all I'm going to need there. Now I will really quickly, actually I'm gonna grab all the pieces for each set. That way I can place this box off to the side and be all ready to go when pressing these. So now I can just organize all my little groupings and I'll show you how easy this is. I love this little snap press. And okay, I don't know if I mentioned, I probably did, sorry. It's, it's um, well, it's daylight savings weekend, so it's later than I even think it is because I'm still getting used to the time adjustment. So I'm a little sleepy as I'm crafting this evening for you, but this is from Cam Snaps. I'll link their website down below in case you want to take a closer look at it. But I am going to grab and 
disassemble my little press and take out the press adapter. So I need to just unscrew this and then I need to place in my little punch tool. So I purchased the little punch adapter, which just places a hole in my material. So I'm going to place that in the base and then I will just screw in the little punch to the top. Now I don't like to screw all the way in. I just leave it a little bit out because I feel like it gives a deeper impression. So then I will just find where I want to put my little snap and see here I'm going to well, I'll probably put it about there okay and I'll show you what I decided oh let me undo that a little bit more let's do leather side up that might help okay okay so if I take my snap. I'm going to place the pokey side in and then I'll show you. I did a little more than a quarter of an inch there. Okay. So that looks really nice. And I'm saying a little bit more of the quarter of an inch from the top there is where the actual hole is placed. So then what I will do is I will take this with, without installing this piece, right? I am going to take and wrap and I think this is going to be strong enough just to poke a hole and it is so I just poked a hole that way I can I only have to punch once so then I have my hole on this side and then what I can do is I can start assembling so I'm going to put a female piece there female or male it doesn't matter and then I'm going to take this adapter out place the press piece back in and they make hand um, press tools as well so you can get that as well to do this and then with the smooth side down I'm just going to put it right inside and press down to install that snap okay so the first one is installed so then we have our hole for our second one so we can put on this end we are going to put the pokey side up and through. So then it will be the smooth side down. That's why I kind of like to assemble them independently because then I can kind of mimic, okay, it needs to snap that way, right? And then I'll put the other end, again, just opposite of whether, whatever end the other side was. So if you used the male on this side, then you're gonna use the female on this side. If you use the female on this side, use the male on this side. They just have to be opposite, but it doesn't matter which one goes first, okay? And then snap together and you have your little napkin ring holder. And I think that was a good choice on the color because I think it's just so subtle. You just barely even notice it. There we go. There is our little napkin holder. I think that's so fun. And faux leather comes in so many prints and styles. So you could really have fun with this idea. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the remaining four and then I'll be all done. Okay, those turned out really fun. There was only one of them that I, I kind of got the snap a little crooked in there. Um, so it was hard to snap, but it still snapped in there. It just took a little, 
a little effort to get it really in there. But I think these are really fun. I like how subtle they are and I really think they don't need anything more than that because the print and the material are just so stunning. I think they are just simply stunning on their own. So you could further dress these up if you'd like, but I'm going to stop there because that is the style that I'm really hoping to achieve on my Thanksgiving table. And I think these are just going to be so beautiful. So many beautiful and fun things happened on my craft table tonight. I hope you were inspired by these. I love how everything came together. And I just really think that these are some fun pieces that you can incorporate into your November or Thanksgiving decor. I'm loving this pillow. I think it's so pretty. Again, I really love a blue or a navy around this time of year. I think it's just beautiful. I love this home sign. I love that you don't have to take it down right away. So fun and this tassel is just so sweet as well. This is going to look absolutely beautiful on our Thanksgiving table. And I love the sentiment. Again, not something you need to take down right away. Although I probably won't be having 16 candles all the time at dinner time. That will be only Thanksgiving. But I think this is really, really fun. And I like that you don't necessarily need to have this only up for Thanksgiving. And I was thinking after lighting all the beautiful candles, how pretty they will look with these really pretty napkin rings. That is so fun. If you need a hostess gift, these little pretty coasters are a perfect idea. Also would be really pretty on your own Thanksgiving table if you are hosting this year. Not really Thanksgiving related, but I really needed a fun little piece for myself for this November. And I really love this little mama cubed shirt. It snuck out of the little frame there, but it's so fun. And then I also love this hello fall sign. It just turned out so pretty. It's exactly what I hoped it would be. And I'm so glad that I waited on this beautiful wood piece because it really just was waiting for the perfect design. Of course, off camera, we also have this final piece that we did as well. I just think this is so pretty. I'm really thrilled with it, and I hope you are as well. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please let me know which craft ended up being your favorite or which one you are going to recreate yourself. I can't wait to join you again next week as we continue crafting for November and Thanksgiving. So many additional fun things coming to my craft table. So get ready for that. Be sure to subscribe if you are joining for the first time so that you don't miss out. And I will see you all next week.